Hi folks, I'm Gordon Barkerville, a retired physical education teacher and principal. I'm retiring in 2007. I certified as a CanFit Pro personal trainer and started a fitness business, Personal Active Lifestyles Fitness, Pell Training or Pell Fitness for short. My business includes personal training, indoor and outdoor boot camps and running programs. As well, in January 2008, I started managing and instructing a 50 plus seniors fitness program in Marystown and another in Bjorn in 2009. We branded ourselves the uh, Bjorn Marystown Easy Striders 50 plus. This online fitness program is for the Bjorn Marystown Easy Striders, their family and friends, and for former and current Pell participants and their family and friends. It is based on a fitness program for the three 50 plus groups operating at three different venues in the Bjorn Marystown area. They are the Bjorn Senior Citizens 50 Plus in Bjorn, the Marystown Senior Citizens Golden Age 50 Plus Club in Marystown, and the Bjorn Marystown 50 Plus Group that operates at the Loons' Cove Community Center. Each group receives funding through the Community Healthy Living Grant from the Department of Seniors, Wellness, and Social Development. The programs typically operate during the fall and winter months. The COVID-19 pand pandemic forcing all fitness programs to be placed on hold, I decided to create a video for Easy Striders and Pell clients to follow at home. I recognize that not all participants use the internet, that is Facebook and YouTube, so maybe a DVD could be created later. Now that the program will be available online, Easy Striders and others may wish to follow the program during the summer and spring months. I encourage you to invite family and friends to log on to the, to the program. Program presentation. The program is presented in parts similar to what we do in each venue. There is a warm up, a workout bout consisting of dumbbell section, followed by balance work, then a second uh, dumbbell section. There is a cardio section using a weighted ball, followed by a cool down. You are advised to follow each part in sequence. There's also a complementary resistance to workout. On this background introductory view, uh, video is viewed at least, once this background video is viewed at least once, you're advised to go directly to part one and go forward from there. From here, I outline various aspects of a fitness program to help you know what you're doing and why you're doing it. These aspects are as follows. What is physical fitness? six health-related components of physical fitness, benefits of regular physical activity and exercise, designing your fitness, fit, fitness program, primal moves or movement patterns for strength training, the FIT formula, two major principles of training for exercise and uh, fitness, the Canada Fitness Activity Guidelines, and exercise responsibility. I'm going to now go over those particular aspects and then come back to my notes here. Excuse me for a moment. So, what is physical fitness? It is the body's ability to function effectively and efficiently. It is associated with a person's ability to work effectively, enjoy leisure time, be healthy, meet emergent situations, and resist chronic disease such as a heart attack, diabetes, stroke, and cancer, or conditions such as back pain and obesity. It consists of health-related fitness components and skill-related components, a, aka sport fitness. Each component is specific but interrelated to each other. Here I will focus on the health-related fitness components. The six health-related physical fitness components. Cardiovascular endurance, muscular endurance, muscular strength, balance, flexibility, body composition. Now I'll briefly focus on each one of those components. Bear with me. Cardiovascular endurance. It's the ability of the heart, the lungs, the blood vessels to function effectively. The ability of the body to perform prolonged large muscle dynamic exercises at moderate to high intens intensity levels. For example, being able to walk or jog or ski or snowshoe for 30 to 60 minutes. Muscular strength, the amount of force a muscle can produce with a single maximum effort. For example, how much weight can you lift or push? 
such as lifting a box of wood or your grandchild. Muscular endurance, the ability of a muscle or a group of muscles to remain contracted or to contract repeatedly. For example, how many times can you lift a box of wood or a case of milk? Balance, the ability to sense the location, orientation, position, and movement of your body in its various parts. For example, the ability to support yourself on one foot, or walking a straight line, or stepping over a pothole when you're out walking, or getting on and off the sidewalk when you're out walking, jumping away from a car or a barking dog. Flexibility, the range of motion or the amount of movement, a joint or a series of joints, the ability to move joints through the full range of motion. For example, how well can you twist to see a clearing before pulling out when you go to pass a car? And then finally, body, body composition. Relative proportion of fat in the body versus fat-free muscle, bone, and water in the body. The parameters are total body mass, mass fat, uh, fat-free mass, and regional fat distributions in the body. There are six other skills uh, with respect to fitness, okay, and therefore people who participate in athletics or sports. Agility, also balance, coordination, speed, power, and reaction time. I'm not going to focus on those here in this video. The benefits of regular physical activity and exercise. Reduces the risk of heart disease, coronary heart disease, and heart attack. Improved weight management has a, has a direct effect on your metabolic rate. There's an improved health and lifespan, prevention of type 2 diabetes, increased bone mass, increased longevity, and improved immunity to diseases. Also improved mental health and stress management, and a maintenance of work capacity, whether you are still working or you want to carry on with your favorite hobby. In sum, Physical activity is a priority lifestyle that impacts health, wellness, and fitness. In Canada, active living is another term that is interchanged with physical activity. A physical fitness program, such as the Easy Striders Fitness Program, is a prescriptive form of physical activity or exercise. Parts of a fitness workout. We begin with a warm-up. Why have a warm-up? It increases body temperature, increases blood flow to the muscles, and prepares your muscles and joints for more vigorous activity. How? Through dynamic stretching exercises, as I will demonstrate in the uh, warm-up video, part one. Then there's the workout bout, the main part of a workout. It can be a cardiorespiratory uh, endurance workout, such as walking, running, biking, rowing, swimming, interval training, but it also can be resistance training such as weight training as we know it in our program. You can use body weight only, but also include dumbbells, kettlebells, resistance tubes, Pilates balls. You can also improve, imp improvise by using water bottles or cans of soup. And then there's balance training, exercise designed to improve and maintain balance. It is particularly beneficial for older adults. Balance training can be integrated into various phases of the exercise session, including the warm up, the main component, or the cool down. And speaking of the cool down, why would you have a cool down? Well, it provides a gradual recovery of pre exercise heart rate and blood pressure and prevents the pooling of blood in the muscles. It provides an opportunity, an opportunity to do flexibility exercises. How? Through static stretching exercises as will be uh, demonstrated in the cool down part six. Now, as my uh, Easy Striders well know, I speak about the primal moves or movement patterns, okay, for full body strength training. When we're doing a fitness program, designing one or participating in one, we need to, we need to be looking at seven primal moves or movement patterns in each strength training session either using body weight only or working with dumbbells and other implements such as kettlebells, weighted balls, 
bottles of water, and cans of soup. The, prim the primal movements are as, are as follows with a demonstration for each movement. Gait. Walking. Walking backwards. Marching on the spot. Squat. Lunging to the front, to the back, or to the side. Push, taking something and pushing it over your head, okay? Or getting down on the floor and doing a push-up. Pull, thing is doing a roll, pulling up like this, or pulling up on a lawnmower, or any other kind of cord on a machine. And bending, bending over like so bending over to pick up something from the floor, and then twisting, being able to twist to the left or to the right, okay? Or, and sometimes, to prevent a twist, such as when you're out walking with a dog and the dog wants to go that way, but you want to go that way. You have to resist the dog pulling you that way. So you're such thing as a twist and anti-rotation. Now, another thing that I speak to the uh, Easy striders. Single joint versus multiple joint exercises. A single joint exercise is a move that only engages one joint and one muscle group. For example, when you're doing a bicep curl, got a weight in your hand going right here, one joint is involved, it is the elbow joint, and one muscle is engaged. If you do a kickback, pushing your arm back like that, it's still only one joint involved and muscle on the back of the arm, your triceps being engaged. Then there's multiple joint exercises, okay, and it moves, it engages two or more joints and two or more muscle groups. For example, let's say you want to do an overhead press, your shoulder is moving, your elbow is moving, okay, so all the muscles in your arm are engaged, plus all the muscles around your shoulder to press up like this. If you're doing a squat, squatting down like this. Your hip joints are engaged, your knee joints are engaged, and your ankle joints are engaged. So all the muscles around your hip and all the muscles in your legs and lower legs and in your feet are engaged. It engages the glutes, the quads, the hamstrings, the calves, and more muscles. Okay, you use both types of exercise in an exercise session, but put more emphasis on the multiple joint exercises and they engage more muscle groups. Multiple joint exercises also burn more calories, which is important in weight management if that is one of your fitness goals. Now, principles of training for exercise and fitness. There are a number of principles of training. Here, I will focus only on two. Overload principle and the principle of progression. First, overload principle. It's the most basic of all principles. The body will become stronger and function better if increased demands, overload, are placed upon it. Doing more than normal is necessary for benefits. Sit less, stand more. Less in activity, become more active. Muscle, group, muscle must work against a greater than normal load to get stronger. Okay, four pound weights or greater than two or three four pound weights. Muscles must be stretched longer than in normal to increase flexibility. 30 second stretch is good, but a 50 second stretch is better. Now I gotta go back to the muscle group, okay? If you're using a two or three pound weight, get used to it, and then move up to a four pound and eventually to a five pound and so on. Now the principle of progression. Increase your workload progressively for maximum improvement and to prevent injuries. It should occur in a gradual progression rather than in a major burst. For example, on the bicep curl, work with two pound weights for a couple of weeks, then progress to three pounds, and then eventually to four pounds, and so on. Okay, if you do not follow the progression, uh, principle of progression, it could result in excessive soreness or injury. Most effective training is when sessions become progressively more challenging. Going longer, lifting heavier weight, moving heavier weight, and whatnot. Now the fit formula. Frequency, how often? For example, how often a week do you walk, swim, or do weight training? 
intensity, how hard. For example, how fast do you walk or swim per kilometer? How heavy are your dumbbell weights? How many repetitions? The number of times you move a weight in a set. What is your heart rate during these exercises? Time, how long? For example, how long is the exercise session? Maybe a walk, a swim, or a weight training session. And the type, the mode of physical activity. Is it walking, swimming, snowshoeing, skiing, or is it resistance training, weight training, okay? And the term resistance and weight training are used interchangeably. Following the FIT formula, basically it's a prescription that may be used to prevent or treat illness such as cardiovascular disease, diabetes, and arthritis. Now, the Canada Fitness Activity Guides. There are guidelines put out by the Canadian government. They're for younger people and middle-aged people, okay, and for older adults. I have two here. For adults 18 to 64 and adults 65 and older. I will read both. To achieve health, this is for 18 to 64. To achieve health benefits, adults age 18 to 64 should accumulate at least 150 minutes of moderate to vigorous intensity aerobic exercise per week. And that can be in bouts of 10 minutes or more. Or in other words, walking, snowshoeing, jogging, swimming, and whatnot. It is also beneficial to add muscle and bone strengthening activities using major muscle groups at least two times a week. And that's what you, the Easy Striders, have been doing for the past seven, eight, ten years, depending on which group you're in. Okay? And the intention of do, presenting this video to you and the subsequent parts is for you to be able to choose to do training at home at least twice a week. You could do more if you wish. Okay? More physical activity pro provides greater health benefits. For older adults, 65 and older, it's very similar. To achieve health benefits and improve functional abilities, adults aged 65 and older should accumulate at least 150 minutes of moderate to vigorous intensity aerobic physical activity per week in bouts of 10 minutes or more. Again, walking, jogging, swimming, snowshoeing, okay? But it's also beneficial to add muscle and bone strengthening activities using major muscle groups, multiple joint activities, at least two times per week. Again, the same as you've been doing in your Easy Striders fitness programs. Those with poor mobility should perform physical activities to enhance balance and prevent falls. And as you know, as the Easy Striders, that uh, in the programs that you do in person at your various venues, there is a focus on balance training, and that is gonna be actually part of this video. More physical activity provides greater health benefits. The last one in this video, in terms of me reading a slideshow to you. <coughs> Excuse me. I always have a glass of water, will you? Preferably in a bottle, glass, uh, sorry, a plastic container. Exercise responsibly. Things to consider as you exercise, whether you're going in person to an exercise program or you're doing at home following what I'm going to present to you over the next number of videos or anything that you choose to do on your own. Regular exercise is beneficial to your health and that an online physical fitness program which includes balance and flexible exercises and strength development exercises is an effective way to enhance your personal fitness. However, you need to recognize that all fitness activities involve some degree of risk and that this risk is relative to your current level of health and fitness. You need to accept all risks of injury or illness, which may arise as a result of your participation in a fitness program, whether it's this one or any other program. You should exercise within your comfort level. During exercise, your body may show signs that you should stop exercising. The symptoms or the signs or symptoms are as follows. Lightheadedness, dizziness, and fainting. Chest heaviness pain or tightness, palpitations or irregular heartbeats, sudden shortness of breath, not due to increased physical activity, or discomfort or stiffness in muscles and joints persisting for several days after exercise. <clears throat> Excuse me. 
It is your responsibility to report any of these signs or symptoms to your doctor and stop exercising immediately. From here, I'm going to continue to give you some more notes, and then I'm going to uh, do part one, a warm-up. What you need for each session. To feel comfortable during each exercise session, I recommend the following. Loose-fitting exercise clothing, exercise shoes, water in a plastic container, a stable chair as the one I'm sitting on right here, lightweight dumbbells, and a weighted ball. It is recommended that you have two or more dumbbells to do uh, two sets of dumbbells to do single joint exercises versus the multiple joint exercises. Two bottles of water or cans of soup can substitute for dumbbells. For example, bottle of water, can of soup. If you do not have a weighted ball such as a Pilates ball, the dumbbells and or water bottles will suffice for the ball work. I will demonstrate that in the videos. Other important notes. Terms like set and repetition are used in the exercise program. A set is a round of repetitions, shortened to rep, which between 12 and 8 and 12 reps per set. Typically, when using light weights, you progressively work your way up to 12 repetitions per set, then move up to a heavier weight and eventually to even heavier weights. Stop and rest at any time to get a drink or just to take a break. On repetitions for each exercise, you can add or do few repetitions for each exercise depending on your current fitness level. So you're just starting and I'm going to be doing 12 rep uh, reps in the, in, the, in the video. You could only do 10 or 8 or 6. Okay? You can generally go to 15 or 16 you wish, but after that you're not getting any benefit. It's better that you actually choose a heavier weight and stick with 8 to 10, 12 reps. On repetitions for each exercise, you can add or do fewer repetitions. I think I just mentioned that. The program videos are presented in order, parts 1 through part 7. Part 1 will be the warm-up. Part 2 will be a dumbbell workout, segment A. Part 3 will be a balance work. Part 4 will be dumbbell work, segment B. And each, in each of those uh, dumbbell segments, there will also there'll be work for the upper body, for the lower body, for the back, for the front of the body, and the core. Part 5, cardio work using a weighted ball or a substitute implement. Part 6 is the cool down. Part 7 is a resistance tube workout, which can be done as a separate workout or as a complement to the dumbbell work. Thank you for listening. Um, I suggest that people listen to this at least once. Uh, this uh, presentation that I'm reading from, uh, I'm going to actually post that uh, somewhere either on the internet or send it uh, to people who, who would like to have it. Enjoy, thank you, and we'll see you in part one, the warm up. Thank you for listening.